Welcome to the weekly video podcast for the new PBS series Design E Squared. This exclusive online program will take you beyond the episode you just watched and deeper into the world of sustainable design. The Green Apple. The city is in many ways the greatest energy saving device man's ever created. There's no better model. I always wanted to shoot New York because skyscrapers and big buildings are sexy. So many people work and live there and there's so much energy that's being used. Since we only had six shows, we wanted to go with bigger ideas that represented how people should live. A skyscraper in itself, though interesting, supported the idea of a city, but it wasn't enough. Then I read an article by David Owen in The New Yorker, which was somewhat of a surprise to me. When people think about the environment, they think about my environment. And, and I think it's why when somebody like me moves from Manhattan into the Connecticut countryside, you feel as though you've done something good for the environment. Well, you've done something good for your own environment, but you were a much better uh, ecological citizen when you were back living in a world of concrete. What David Owen does is he shows through his article that living in the countryside where you think is the green, sustainable place to be is actually much worse. When we lived in New York, we got around the way most New Yorkers do, mainly by walking. We walked across the street to the grocery store. We brought our groceries home in a push cart. Our daughter's pediatrician was in the lobby of our building. There was a liquor store and a McDonald's and a grocery store right in the building. When we needed to go someplace that was farther away, we took a subway or a bus or occasionally a taxi. It's often hard to separate how we think we live from how we actually live. And I think everybody who moves to the suburbs is thinking, oh, I want my yard, I want my piece of grass. And, and yet, if you walk through the suburbs, you seldom see anybody doing anything in the yard except taking care of the yard itself. What he really got across was how our perceptions and reality are not quite on the same level. There are different ways to think about things, and there are reasons to look deeper into every single problem you look at sprawl and then you look at the zoning regulation in the municipalities where that sprawl exists, you can, you can often see the key to it. We require people to build big parking lots. We require people to set their buildings back from the street and to set them far from their neighbors. It's not because the people who live in Phoenix are worse people than the people who live in New York. It's that they live so far from their destinations and from one another that no conceivable public transportation system could ever serve them. It doesn't matter how many studies you do, how much federal money you put into it. If the bus doesn't take you where you're going to go, you're going to drive. Human beings are not very good long-range planners. We react to crises and then usually not very well. Many of us feel that if, you know, if I just put my bottles and cans and my newspapers out on the curb, then you know, I'm doing what I can. And most recycling, as it's currently done, is an illusion. It's not solving the big problems, and in some ways it's cre it creates problems. Our economy, our lives, the towns we've built, our cars, our highway system have depended on the essentially limitless supply of readily available fossil fuels. And if those fuels become more scarce, more expensive to extract, and then eventually run out altogether, we're in a dark situation. 150 years ago, the Industrial Revolution started, and it, and it really flipped the world over. I mean, it really changed, dramatically changed, the way we lived on the planet, and in many ways, very negatively. But today, there's so much more technology. There's so many more educated people. There's so much more mind power that will allow us, or could allow us if we focus on it, to change once again, to become much more conscious about the way we live on this planet. Next time on Design E Squared. One in seven people are currently in what we call inadequate housing. In 30 years, it's going to be one in three. There's a sense among architects like, like Sergio that something very fundamental has been lost in the training of architects. I tell my students the responsibility of an architect is to be inclusive, to include all things about this world, and that means all communities. For more information and to subscribe to our other podcasts, visit us online at design-e2.com.